Dear colleagues, I have great pleasure in welcoming the participants of the World Maritime Technology Congress in my hometown St. Petersburg. Today I present the results of studies of Russian, Polish and Slovenian scientists in the field of safety of maritime navigation. The safety of the marine navigation. Presently, to provide the safety of marine navigation various shipboard and coastal communications and navigation systems are being implemented. These include automatic identification system, electronic chart display and information system, integrated bridge and navigation systems, automatic radar plotting aids, global navigation satellite system, global maritime distress and safety system, long-range identification and tracking of ships, vessel traffic service, the marine information and communication technologies have emerged as a result of the convergence of mathematics, computer science, and marine technology, information and communication technologies. Classification of the wireless networks. Many networks are wireless self-organizing, dynamic and decentralized networks, without a fixed structure. While each network node tries to send data to a specific node, the decision to which node the data will be directed to may dynamically, using a temporary network configuration. That is the difference between wired and wireless networks. In wired networks the router manages data streams, and in wireless networks, access points. A minimum configuration and rapid formation allow the use of such self-organizing networks in extraordinary situations, such as natural disasters and war conflicts. Classification of the ad hoc and e dorks. A static, fixed, ad hoc network. Mobile ad hoc network. Maritime ad hoc network. Military ad hoc network. Tactical mene. Metropolitan Ad Hoc Network. Networks many are formed spontaneously without any major administrative system. Node functions in this type of network can be performed by routers and a host. They can transmit data packets to other nodes, and support the execution of user applications. Typical Network Structured Addressing Scheme. Mana is formed spontaneously without any administrative measures. Routers or hosts may constitute nodes of this type network. They can transmit data packets to other nodes and support the execution of user applications. Typical network unstructured, ad hoc, scheme. An unstructured network on the other hand, it's more like a messy one. It has no rules. No working policies, anyone can add, remove or change whatever they want. A good example of this is peer-to-peer -peer networks, like Skype. Anyone who joins in becomes an integral part of the network, and changes its topology. However that person can opt out any time he likes, the network will eventually change, but without any consequences. Even the designers of these peer-to-peer -peer networks have no control on the network topology. That's unstructured network for you. Typical network unstructured, ad hoc, scheme, the self-organization. Main many applications 1. Tactical network, provides military communication and control functions in combat environment. 2. Maritime shipping networks. Military and civil ship to ship and ship to shore communication. 3. Emergency assistance, search and rescue operations, environmental survey after an accident. 4. Electronic commerce, payments made and received from many location. Access to customer database. 5. Educational applications virtual classrooms or conference rooms for use during conferences, meetings or lectures. Further we will discuss achievements of Mesh Dynamics, a leader in Mene technology, 
developer of Mesh Dynamics patented third-generation wireless mesh technology. Typical network hybrid, structured slash unstructured, addressing scheme. In this case, you know exactly how many servers, workstations are, where they are, how they are communicating. If anything needs to change, upgrade or move, it will affect the entire network and thus needs good planning beforehand. The admins know exactly what is going on at any time. No one can just come in and add a new server or workstation without authorization. Man as routing from ship A into ship B. Various types of protocols have been designed to match a variety of MAN A structures. MAN A routing protocols are divided into two groups, table driven slash proactive routing protocols and on demand slash reactive routing protocols. MAN A Mesh Dynamics Since 2002 Mesh Dynamics has been a patented third generation wireless multi radio technology. Here is a brief comparison with earlier generations. Mesh Dynamics architecture of the first generation was a single radio system ensuring access to users' devices and connections in wired, guided optic fiber or wireless networks. Users quickly understood that two radio channels would be more efficient than one in wired or optic fiber light wave. Second generation Mesh Dynamics Dual Radio, was developed by locating in each node to radio channels, operating in 802.11b slash G and 802.11a bands. Infrastructure of original short-range eyes. Short-range eyes limitations. 1. Effective use of eyes may be achieved when all relevant ships have been equipped with transponders. Eyes and radar data are supplementary to ICTAS. 2. The issue of complete replacement of radio location devices by eyes in the future should not be considered because eyes information refers to ships carrying eyes transponders, while the radar allows to observe all targets that reflect radio waves, aids to navigation, ships, coastline, etc. 3. Following an IMO decision, only globally used eyes may become a tool for vessel monitoring and accident prevention. This means that only such eyes systems can be installed on vessels whose parameters are regulated by international law, as they may ensure reliability. 4. In the case of ships carrying a radar, eyes is used for accurate ship identification. Some ports and vessel traffic services regard eye systems as tools useful in dense traffic areas, already covered by radars. However, due to various propagation characteristics of VHF radio waves and the capability of eyes to work effectively in areas not covered by radars, some ports consider eyes as an extra tool, aid to navigation, in narrow passages where radar observation is much restricted. The infrastructure of a regional short long-range eyes. To eliminate short-range eyes limitations let us consider a problem of extending the limited coverage of a short-range eyes transponder from areas where VHF waves are available to global operation. It is possible when satellite systems of data communications are used to function as transmission receiving stations. The possibility of eyes message reception by a satellite was presented first by Wall and Hoy at 4th Eye Symposium on Small Satellites for Earth Observation in 2003. This presentation was published in the article New Possible Roles of Small Satellites in Maritime Surveillance. Acta Astronautica, Volume 56. The concept of satellite eyes was also used at 55th International Astronautical Congress by Ericsson, Hoy, Narai, and Meland. Detailed analysis of the problem has been given by Hoy in the article Observation Modeling and Detection Probability for Space Based Eyes Reception. Generalization of Telecom Infrastructure. 
There are various approaches to the generalization of telecommunication infrastructure. Based on an analysis performed, the following generalization can be made. Telecom infrastructure can be divided into three areas, close range area dash, less than 200 meters, Wi-Fi. Middle range area dash, less than 50 kilometers, by max or LTE. Distant range range dash, unlimited, satellites. The close range area. In the close range area wireless fidelity, Wi-Fi, telecommunication infrastructure should be used as it is technologically developed, and the operation of Wi-Fi alliance is able to provide a highly effective collaboration forum. Expand the Wi-Fi industry. Develop the industry with new technology specifications and programs. Support industry agreed standards. Deliver great product connectivity through testing and certification. Middle range area based on mobile with Maxent or LTE. It is purposeful to use mobile with Maxent or LTE telecommunication infrastructure in the middle range area as these are technologically the most advanced. Mobile with Max offers effective broadband links to such services as data transmission, voice over IP, stream video with excellent quality of service. Broadband access brings to users such devices as mobile internet devices, ultra-mobile personal computers, netbooks. Leading global mass producers of devices based on mobile with Max are Samsung, Intel, Asus, HTC, Lenovo and others. National mobile with Max networks are widespread in USA, Clear, Korea, KTY Bro, Japan. UQC, Russia, Yoda, and other countries. WiMAX is the perfect technology for use in the field to securely communicate and transfer information back and from a central control operation to mobile units deployed in the field. The middle range area based on long-term evolution. LTE is based on a technology similar to mobile WiMAX encompassing multiplexing with orthogonal frequency division multiple access, smart antenna, multiple input multiple output, MIMO, and coordinated multipoint. The main feature of this technology is high rate of data transmission. Respective loading speeds complying with 3GPP LTE standard theoretically reach 326 bits per second download and 173 bits per second upload. According to UMTS forum data, it is projected that in 2015 overall income share of LTE network operators will be about 15% of global cellular services market, and the number of subscribers worldwide will exceed 400 million. The Distant Range Area the distant range area is starting with the areas of uncertain access in WinMax and LTE technologies. Long-range eyes and long-range identification and tracking infrastructures should provide a connection regardless of a distance to the coast. Presently, the only technology assuring communications over any distance is via satellites. In terms of minimum data transmission time the Inmarsat satellite group is ahead of others. Depending on distance between ships, this time ranges from 10 to 100 miss the distance between ships and a base station is unlimited. Generalization of software distribution models. There are three basic software distribution models, client, client server and client loud. Client model, locally, as part of its infrastructure, each user has a computer with a set of programs on the hard disk. Client server model. Its use is expanding due to advancements in network technologies. One or a few clients and one or a few servers with a common basic operating system and a telecommunication system make a uniform system enabling distributed computing and data analysis and presentation. The use of client-server model allows the client to get access to resources of remote servers, such as databases, 
files, printers, processor time and others. Client Cloud Model Cloud computing is a model for enabling convenient, on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources, for example, networks, servers, storage, applications, and services, that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. There are three basic types of clouds, private, public, internet clouds, and hybrid. Cloud computing allows to work on documents on every ship and every computer, there is no need to install program. Postscriptum The safety of the marine navigation the networks and communication systems branch provides technical services and conducts research and development in the area of networks and communication systems. Specifically, much of work includes the investigation of mobile wireless networks having dual-use military and civilian applications. This includes focused research in related areas such as routing, auto-configuration, multicasting, NI casting, data transport, network and protocol simulation, dynamic system emulation, visualization, and applications for use in challenged and dynamic networking environments. Thank you for your attention.